Sisters, welcome to today's Eucharistic celebration. We are on the 13th Sunday in ordinary time. Long live the God of life. Death is one of the inescapable sad realities of our life. It is particularly hurting when it is not just the way people who are young or are especially good, strong, or needed in a family or society. Our faith tells us that suffering and death are not part of God's original plan for mankind. They were introduced into our life by the devil when he convinced the first human beings to disobey God's instructions. Their destructive presence is further strengthened every time we sin. Today's liturgy of the word reminds us that the God in whom we believe does not want death and suffering because he is a God of life. He wants that all human beings may have life and have it to the full. Such is the message of the first reading and the gospel. In this Eucharistic celebration, let us be thankful to the Lord for the gifts of life and wholeness in mind and body. Let us also pray that all human beings may enjoy these blessings. My dear brothers and sisters, let us all stand and join the choir and sing our hymns.
mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God did not make them, 
nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he passioned all these that they might have been, and the creators of the world are no son. And there is not a destructive blood among them, nor any domain of the narrow world on earth. For justice is undying. God formed man to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made him. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mr. So, Sora so, let our response be, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Please repeat. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will tell you, O Lord, for you drew me here and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the little world. You preserved me from among those going into the pit. Please response. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. Please respond. I will praise the Lord for your rescue. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. Please respond. I will praise the Lord for your rescue. Mutual solidarity and generosity toward the poor were among the main features of the early Christian communities. In the passage we are about to hear, the Apostle Paul explains the reasons that motivate such generous solidarity. The second reading. The proclamation from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, disperse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we had for you, may you excel in these gracious acts also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief, while you are burdened, but that, as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply your needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may, may be equality, as it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand on the now with us.
Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him. And he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pledged, pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come, lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. People from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of the commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he took them all out. <coughs> Jesus took along the child's father and mother, and those who were with him entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, rose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ.